Now, having to deal with traffic such as this continues to be a major challenge for most road users, many of whom are essential service providers, workers and even students. Well, there are a lot of conversations about the economic implication of road traffic congestion in urban cities such as Accra. Little is ever been said about the health impact of SAVE on the individual, the community at large. It's about 3 p.m. on Monday afternoon. Traffic is already building on the Pombaria Dorena stretch of the Tema Aplau Road. Several of the passengers in these vehicles are heading towards areas within the Pum Katamanso municipality. A lot of them who have traveled quite some distance are still held in heavy traffic. We have a problem on this road. So, like, if they make it overhead, we can help us. And the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the security of public people, some of them today are not doing their work. Look at how we are suffering from other places. We have to come here, come direct the traffic. So please, tell the government to help us. How many minutes do you stay in the traffic? How often is it? Two hours. Sometimes two hours. Sometimes three hours. Oh, sometimes I can be here for two hours. When it starts from the back, I can stay in traffic for about two hours. It's really bad. It's stressful. The traffic situation here is very bad. Especially in the morning and then when we close. You see, there are kids. When we close from school, the traffic situation is very, very bad. From Tema to Dowenya, especially this point, I'll say we spend about 30 to 35 minutes when we get to this junction before we proceed. Usually, people who want to beat traffic do so out of fear of either running late or managing their fuel consumption. There is limited knowledge though about the risk exposures the situation also carries. In this report, I set out to examine the potential health impact resulting from everyday traffic jam. First is how overcrowding on road networks amid traffic noise could potentially lead to post-traumatic stress disorders and other pedestrian dangers thereby adversely affecting the psychosocial well-being of the individual. In this traffic as it mounts up, there's a lot of noise produced, cars honking and potentially it affects the hearing. But a lot of the effect is also psychological. So it ends up giving a lot of stress to passengers, to commuters on the road. There's a lot of stress, and the stress is related to cardiovascular diseases. And these have been found in large and small research that the traffic, spending a lot of time in traffic contributes to uh, stress and cardiovascular diseases. One thing that we see commonly in our environment is the, the Okada, or the motor bikes that run in between these heavy traffics. It poses a lot of danger to pedestrians who also have to use the road. This is the School of Public Health, University of Ghana. I'm here specifically at the Department of Biological, Environmental and Occupational Health Services for some more explanation on the development. The fuel, that the, the gasoline or the diesel, it's a, it's a chemical, it's, it's hydrogen and carbons, right? So in an ideal vehicle, we expect that when you bend these things, uh, hydrogen and carbon, you get water and, and carbon dioxide. But in an, an inefficient system like the cars we use today, when you bend them, you get uh, some product of, some leftover hydrocarbons and some toxic substance. And though these are what happens when, when uh, they are released when the car is moving. Now, in a situation where the car is a congestion, cars are moving slowly, so they are em emissions. So altogether, these ca chemicals are emitted into the environment. We know that some of the, the typical ones, the hydrocarbons are, we know are carcinogenic, right? They can call, they are, uh, they are call cancer causing agents. At some minutes after midday here at Accra Central, a commercial hub in Ghana, it's rush hour and as brisk business goes on, there are those who find the stream of traffic unbearable. Out of frustration, discomfort and the observance of the COVID-19 safety protocols in the vehicles, they are compelled to alight and continue their journey by foot. I normally come here, I've been coming here all day to, to just take some business transactions. So I'm um, time, you know, everything is about time. So that's why I get down to work so that I'll get there fast. I'm coming from Wager. And I'm going to Accra. So for how long have you been? When did you set off? What was the time now? How, what estimate? Oh, it's been about an hour now. But during this traffic, I'm sure I might get another hour.
the traffic so I have to get out and on the thing. More worrying about the situation is a toxic emission which have been identified as major ecological pollutant attributable to traffic congestion. They are said to have some mobility effect including cardiovascular and respiratory ailments in the long term. The physical contaminant may shorten the lives of pedestrians, passengers and even other vulnerable groups. The major concern as a public health person will be, is the, will be the impact of noise and vehicular pollutants on street workers, on people living close to roads, because everything that is, is emitted in the environment doesn't stay there. They, they move, they travel. So definitely people living close to major roads. So school children and uh, uh, pregnant women and hawkers, adult people, these days we have a lot of beggars all over, the, all over the, the streets. And so these people are very vulnerable and also the poor. City authorities have over the years been helping the traffic situation. One of the mandated agencies is the Ghana Police Service. Personnel of its Motor Traffic and Transport Department, MTTD, as part of their official mandate, are responsible for controlling traffic and enforcing traffic regulations. The police outlined some of the challenges that come with their work. Uh, people must move. They want to move the traffic. And the challenge is how to allow people easy access to their destinations and to uh, maybe their business places. And that has been a challenge. Because a lot of vehicles are coming onto the road, but the road is not expanding. Whatever we had in till our 10 years time, 10 years ago, is still what we have now. But the more, more vehicles are coming into the system. And of course, that will account for a lot of traffic congestion that we have all over the place. One other thing that we, 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 we think could be done is if you have efficient public transport system, people will not ordinarily use their private vehicles. They will use the buses, the high occupant, high occupancy buses, so that at least there will be no congestion on the roads. But I think we are not there. We don't have the, that infrastructure yet. And in Ghana, it appears people want to show off their vehicles. But are the officers who even direct traffic concerned about their health and safety while in line of duty? Yes, they are. We talk of safety, safety for all. Yeah. But normally we don't, we don't think about the safety of the traffic policeman. Like you rightly said, the scorching sun, the noise is there. But one will say that that is the occupational hazard that we, 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 we need to contend with. Uh, this is all we have chosen to do. And we pray that the public operates with us. The way Jakaswa toll booth is one of the major traffic zones in the capital. This stretch, which links Accra to the central and western regions, is mostly choked both in the mornings and evenings. On weekends in particular, there is heavy congestion here due to some people traveling to the other regions, some for funeral activities. Many of the passengers in this traffic are persons who commute from the other side of town to the central business district. They lament the daily routine having to endure the commuter traffic challenges. In fact, anything I say will be an understatement. This traffic, in terms of productivity, uh, in terms of convenience, everything about these two boots, it's really frustrating. The exhaust, if it had an effect like, uh, if it had a rapid effect like the way the COVID is spread, I'm sure by now most of we the inhabitants here we would have overwhelmed the, the, uh, the hospital facilities. But how can the situation be managed properly to reduce the adverse health effects associated with the traffic volumes? In all of this, we need to make sure that uh, multimodal transport works within Accra. Railway is very, very important and I believe that if we're going to have the light rail system which is uh, coming very soon, it is going to help. Now, a cursory evaluation of the economic and health impacts of traffic volumes seem to me that the latter is much more manageable. Therefore, government and other relevant bodies within the areas of transport and health must take giant steps and make significant provisions to tackling the public health burden of congestion on our roads.